Hello and a very warm welcome. You are watching Reality Buzz and this is Mansi Dave. A quick and a detailed run through of all that's happening in the real estate sector. Let's kick start the episode and know the latest news. The first news on board says Delhi government for raising circle rate of agricultural land by 125%. Presenting the Delhi budget deputy CM Manish Sisodia said that the government has decided to fulfill the long pending demand of our farmers to increase the circle rate which is taken as benchmark for land acquisition purpose. Taking the news in detail, in a move that will cater the city's farmers, Delhi government today proposed to increase circle rate on agricultural land by up to 125%. In New Delhi, the circle rate for agricultural land has been proposed to increase from the existing rupees 1.50 crore to rupees 3.5 crore per acre. Similarly, circle rate has also been proposed to increase from rupees 1.5 crore to rupees 3.5 crore per acre in South Delhi, Sisodia said. According to proposed rates, if a person wants to buy agricultural land in East Delhi, he or she will have to pay rupees 2.25 crore per acre instead of the earlier 1 crore. In Central Delhi, government proposed to increase circle rate for such land from Rs 1.25 crore to Rs 3 crore. While the Sahdara area, circle rate for agricultural land will be 2.25 crore from the earlier Rs 1 crore. The current circle rate for agricultural land was determined in March 2008 and it is time that the government accepts the reality of the market and acknowledges the right of our farmers, the deputy CM also said. The Aam Aadmi Party government also proposed to increase circle rate for such land from the existing rupees 1.25 crore to 3 crore. And besides, in southwest Delhi, circle rate has been proposed to increase from rupees 1.50 crore to rupees 3.5 crore. The next news talks about Mumbai office rentals. The Mumbai office rentals dipped 4% in quarter 1. Nariman point rates down 3.4% in a year. Exorbitant real estate prices and the shift in demand from Mumbai's central business district Nariman Point to the secondary business district like Bandra Kurla complex in suburb has resulted in this. Mumbai, the country's commercial capital, has witnessed 4% drop in average prime office rentals in the first quarter ended March. Nariman Point has been losing its sheen over the past 5 years to 6 years and rentals have fallen 3.4% in the last one year. In an earlier report, JLL has also noted that Nariman Point is unlikely to re-emerge as Mumbai's power location. With 4% drop in office rentals, Mumbai has performed better than only two cities. Showed a global survey conducted by property consultancy Jones Lang LaSalle. Only Sao Paulo and Moscow, with 5% and 24% depreciation respectively, fared worse in the comparison between central business districts of leading cities across the world. Well, Mumbai figures among those global financial centers that saw a fall in price. Moscow and Sao Paulo, which are also financial centers of these emerging economies, are in the red. Among the mature economies, only Brussels and Paris figure in the red, while Frankfurt sits in the borderline. Most other cities like Sydney, New York, Tokyo and London remain in the black. Brussels and Paris were the two other cities which saw 4% and 3% depreciation respectively. Frankfurt was the only city that saw no change. London was the top performer at 12% increase and rents followed by Tokyo at 7%. Shanghai, Hong Kong and New York all three at 4%. Dubai at 3% and Sydney at 1%. The calculations were made in local currencies and the survey tracks only the central business district across these cities. Long-term trends differ from short-term trends, the latter being mere influences. The fall in Mumbai CBD's rental could be due to the short-term influence. The contrast in Mumbai's office market is that the city has 17% vacancy, which is not healthy. But at the same time, there is gentle appreciation seen in rentals owing to demand revival said Ashutosh Limai, National Director, Research, JLL India. As demand for residential properties move towards suburbs farther away and the city centre, so does the demand for office spaces. As part of the trend, Bandra Kurla complex is also now the de facto CBD of Mumbai, the report said. Some of the other reasons for the shift from Nariman Point to other business districts are sufficient and quality supply in the secondary business district like BKC, because of which occupiers have been moving away from the CBD which had a limited supply of quality office spaces. Most multinationals have moved to secondary business districts already on the back of improved connectivity, competitive lease rentals. Although BKC may be the new central business district, 
it has only a 10 to 11 percent share of the overall supply whereas rentals are lower in SBDs of Central and North Mumbai and supply is high, the reports say. Noting that possessing a house is a turning point in the life of a poor, the Prime Minister said the government's effort is to not just provide a house. The next news is one which talks about the real estate bill. Prime Minister Narendra Modi declared that the government will pass the real estate bill in monsoon session of parliament to protect buyers. Let's take a detailed look into the news. Observing that the image of builders is bad, Prime Minister Narendra Modi promised to protect the home buyers and said a bill in this regard will be pushed during the upcoming monsoon session of parliament. He wrote that there is a lack of holistic vision about the urban planning and said expansion is driven not by the administrators of the city, but by the property developers. In our country, wittingly or unwittingly, the image of builders lobby is bad. Modi said while launching three flagship schemes for urban development across the nation. Asserting that his government is sensitive to consumer protection, he said, a poor person invests all his savings for a house, but when he is cheated, he loses everything. To protect such poor and small consumers, a bill has been brought to parliament and effort will be made to get it passed in the upcoming session. The monsoon session is convened from July 21 for three weeks. The government has introduced the Real Estate Regulation and Development Bill 2013 in Rajya Sabha. It seeks to establish the Real Estate Regulatory Authority for regulation and protection of the real estate sector and to ensure sale of plot, apartment or building in an efficient and transparent manner and to protect the interest of the consumer. Noting that possessing a house is a turning point in the life of a poor, the Prime Minister said the government's effort is to not just provide a house but to provide the right environment to live life to the fullest. Through Amrit Atal Mission for Rejuvenation and Urban Transformation Scheme, which was launched by him, Modi said the aim of the government is to give cities themselves the chance to plan their future goals. With Amrit scheme, the Prime Minister also launched Smart Cities Mission and Housing for All program. Under the Housing for All mission, in the urban areas, two crore houses would be built over the next seven years for the economically weaker sections and low-income groups of this site. Modi also gave a glimpse of the proposed Smart City, which will have provisions like technology, efficient transportation, energy efficiency, walk-to-walk, -walk, cycling, and many more. On the occasion, Urban Development Minister Venkaya Naidu said this mission would ensure house ownership for two crore women, either fully or jointly, with their husbands. And the next news says a land along Hindon in Greater Noida worth Rs 425 crore freed from squatters. Following the orders of Ramaraman, Chairman and CEO of Greater Noida Authority, GNIDA officials, amid heavy police force, raised scores of illegal structures. In an early morning demolition drive, the Greater Noida Industrial Development Authority flattened illegal structures on nearly 300 acres of prime land, valued at nearly Rs 425 crore in the Hindon flood zone area. The drive was undertaken near Greater Noida's Habitpur village. An FIR against five unauthorized developers was registered after GNIDA submitted the complaint. The four-hour drive started around 5 a.m. The authority had received many complaints regarding illegal developers plotting and selling government land to unsuspecting individuals. Senior Greater Noida officials from the district administration, police and provincial armed constabulary personnel participated in the operation. Plotted development of illegal colonies along with site offices of unauthorized developers, their booking offices, roads, etc. were demolished. Manvender Singh, additional CEO GNIDA said, we have also submitted a complaint report against the land mafia in which five persons have been named. According to officials, the land has been enmarked for a green zone to be developed along the riverfront. The freed land has been enmarked for the farmhouse scheme for agriculturalists. Singh said the ACEO warned and the anti-encroachment drive would cover Greater Noida and no one would be allowed to get away scot-free. Any construction being done in the flood zone area is illegal and will be raised to the ground. Only agricultural activity can be allowed in this area, he said. He further warned of strict penal action against fraudsters. 
Coming on to the next story, Pakistan has gone ahead to launch South Asia's first street at a premium of 10% to the offer price earlier this month. In a way, it can be said that Pakistan beats India in rolling out South Asia's first street. It's not the outcome of an ODI series between the traditional rivals, but a progress card on reforms in the world of real estate. At a time when Indian realtors and investors are struggling to roll out real estate investment trusts, Amid regulatory complications and tax uncertainties, Pakistan has gone ahead to launch South Asia's first REIT at a premium of 10% to the offer price this month. A REIT is a financial instrument where the underlying asset is a real estate. The rental income from the property assets are distributed by the trust as dividends to the investors or unit holders of the trust. Typically, therefore, a REIT invests in completed revenue-generating commercial real estate assets. Pakistan-based Dolmen City launched its REIT, offering that got subscribed 1.7 times. It owns a commercial property, which has a mix of mall and office space, and an occupancy of 96%. The company expects a net income of $21.9 million in the first year, while dividends are expected at $20.7 million. This was also the first REIT listing in Pakistan after the country came out with a regulation. Interestingly, yields for the Dolmen City REIT investors in the first year are a percentage point lower than the current yields on Pakistan's government securities that are now trading at 9.75%. Typically, world over, REITs note trade at a positive spread. This was based on the estimation of rental income from the assets, 90% of which will be distributed back to investors. But even then, there were few global investors who bought the story. Allocation to HNI's institutional investors was only 0.6%. Pakistan has streamlined the process significantly to make it attractive for investors. On this note, it's a wraparound for this episode of Reality Buzz. We will be back with more on this. Till then, keep watching Spin TV. Goodbye and take care.